Hello, this is Queen Who Care. I am back again. Hope everybody's continuing to have a wonderful afternoon. And I hope that you're in relaxed mode, eating what you want to eat, drink what you want to eat, just enjoying this beautiful Saturday, 88 degrees here in Decatur, Georgia. But um, I just want to share, hey, I am going to be almost exiting out of Atlanta soon. <laughs> And I am going to share some of my opinions of uh, living here in Atlanta and working at these different jobs. When I tell you, now one thing about the state of Georgia, I have never worked so hard in my life until I came to the state of Georgia. When I tell you, I have I worked hard since I've been here in this state. I worked, I worked it hard in this state. I worked it. I mean, okay, my first job here was working at Dillard's Department Store. Uh, that is in Lithonia, Georgia, at the Stonecrest Mall. And I was, I started off with, um, as a shipping and receiving clerk. Oh, this thing is, let me turn it around here. Um, I started as a shipping and receiving clerk. And I became, um, let me see, oh my goodness, I hold a lot of titles at that. I became a sales associate, customer service, and I became the dock manager for about seven years there. And then, what else job I had here? I worked it for, when I left there, what I did, I think I went into, I'm trying to think, oh my goodness, what I did. I went in, well, I'm just going to name, maybe it'll come to me. Because I can't much remember what I did when I left uh, Dillard's, what job I went to when I went to Dillard's. But I went into security here. I went into security here off and on. I had different positions as security officer. I worked for Lowe's. I worked for Sam's Club. And now I'm at Kroger's. And I think those the jobs I had held uh, while I was here. But, um... One thing I can say about the black people here, they are the worst in customer service. Now, one thing I can say, you got a lot of black people in high position here, um, managers, team leads, supervisors, area managers, whatever it is. But you know what? I find that those black people, they oppress our own people. It's just like it was when um, the slave master, he told um a certain uh, he had he had certain ones where he made them check ties to other black people so that's what they they are still brainwashed here they are still brainwashed like that they they would treat that they, they would they would treat the white man good 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 let them get away with anything that talk would talk to them in a nicely manner but when it comes to our own kind i see it all the time that's why i made a video my, I got a video that I made. I say, I am fully convinced that black people hate each other. I am really fully convinced that black, because the way I see black people carry on ever since. You know what? I never, unless, I never seen that in the state of Florida. I can actually say that when I lived in Florida, I mean, I never seen, you know, if a black person was over us or what, but mostly I think it was white people that was over us, you know, but hey, they treated us better than, better than high. A manager treat his own black. I mean, that just like now, my manager that works in Delhi. I mean, she she know I need help at night. Why would you? Could you know? I have to give shout out to her. I don't know her name. You know, like I say, I'm not good at people name, and I need to get better because I don't want to say it. But I hate to try to pronounce it because I don't want to chop it up. But this certain manager. Um, at Kroger's yesterday, I told her what I was going through in the deli, telling her that they just leave the deli all kind of messages. The, the guy come in, he cook from two, I mean, he come from seven to three, and he leaves, oh my God, he leave the front, everything just in the uproar. Now, I mind me, he's supposed to wash the dishes. He said he didn't come there to do deli. He just come there to cook. He leave the, and he leaves the deli. And, and what I found out yesterday, when I talked to this particular manager in the office upstairs, they supposed to, uh, before they leave, they supposed to, I've been cleaning all the slices. Somebody's supposed to clean two slices before they leave. Somebody's supposed to do the dishes. Somebody's supposed to clean the oven and take out the trash and do, 
And these people ain't been doing nothing. Now, that, mind me, they know what they're supposed to do, but they just so hurry to get out of there. They don't care just leaving all that on me. That's why I've been leaving out every night. Mind me, I come in. My schedule is from 2 to 10, but I've been leaving out at 11 o'clock. Uh, I think um, Thursday night, I didn't get out until midnight. I mean, it was just terrible. It just, you know, who wants to work like that? I'm 61 years old. I did not sign. I told them I'm 61 years old. No matter if I don't look like it. No matter if you see me walking around here and look like I got a lot of energy and all this kind of stuff and I go to the gym, it doesn't matter. Somebody's calling me. I don't know who that. But um, <laughs> but anyway, it, uh, it doesn't matter. I am, when I get home at night, hey, I'm tired like a 61. <laughs> yeah, oh, I want to, yeah, I do have a lot of energy and everything, but let me use my energy to do what I want to do with my energy. Not to, hey, let me work my little eight hours. And don't get me wrong, I don't mind work. It might be times when things get a little tight at work and I got to work hard. You know, I got to speed it up and all this kind of stuff. I don't mind that. But just don't try to ride me because I got a back. I'm going to say it again. Do not ride me because I got a back. I don't mind stepping in, stepping it up and do what I have to do. But but just don't try to use me because you see that I'm a good and hard worker that you just going to put everything on me to do. Don't have no compassion for nobody. you just thinking about yourself. I always say treat people how you want to be treated. Treat people how you want to be treated. Treat people how you want to be treated. And it's true. I always hold that concept, and I always taught my kids to treat people how you want to be treated. You want to be treated good, you do good. You put good in, you'll get good out. But you put bad in, you're going to get bad out. So you just, you know, me, I don't, be, I don't have a supervised position before. And if my person, if I see that, um, if that I didn't have enough help, I would step in. I would always... You know, one thing, when I was the doc manager, people used to say, ooh, Tanya, you were harder than your people. And if I had a certain person, if I had new employees come in, I would train with them. I would work with them until they really got it. I would show them everything. I worked side by side, step by step, and make sure they got it. But this particular manager that we I have here in the daily, she don't do that. Her mind is all over the place. She uh, When I say it's all over the place, it's all over the place. And you know what? When people's mind is all over the place, Dick is not focused to do what they need to do to make their job easy and nobody else's job easy as well. You trying to tell me to do 10 things at one time. I mean, I like to write stuff down and just show me, like, okay, it was this uh, little sleeve thing. You put, slide the chicken in and stuff like that. I couldn't open it up. I am um, you. I am hands-on. You have to show me. If you're telling me, it's like speaking Chinese, but you got to show me. Physically show me, okay, you, you want me to do a certain thing, make one of them, and then I'll follow it from there. I got it. I got it. But, you know, when I first came in Delhi, you should have been working with me and show me every single thing. Okay, Tanya, I'm going to work with you a whole week, and I'm going to show you everything I need to show you in Delhi. That's the way that go. I, one of the, this, this uh, my co-worker, his name is Jim, he told me, you know, the guy that was showing me how to make those uh, tacos I, in the video, he was telling me, that Karen, that's her name, her name Karen. She said that, which is the daily manager, she said, she, he said she told him she don't have time to train. How in the world that you want to have good new workers to do the job that is supposed to be uh, did and you ain't got time to train? That don't even much make sense. You don't even much need to be a supervisor. You need to just sit on down and be a regular employee because you have to train people. One thing about being a supervisor you got to you got to train your new people that come in. You got to if you ain't got enough manpower, you got to step in and step step up your game and work. You got to work side. And if you don't have enough people there to work, you got to come in and work and do it. Okay, you know I was closing by myself at night. You should have been there with me and said, well, you know what, Tanya, I'm finna do some stuff for you. So you, don't, cause okay, I'm gonna stay here until about eight o'clock and I'm gonna do some stuff for you. Do some stuff with you. You know, I'm going to help you clean as much as to 8 o'clock. And then I'm going to leave. And then, um, you know, you you can head up. In the next two hours, you can be out of here. That's the way that worked like that, you know. So this particular supervisor that I told um, yesterday, I said, you know what? I can't. I just can't. It's just too much. You know, I didn't get out of here. She said, no, that shouldn't be. Uh-uh. She said, uh-uh. You go down there and let me know who is working the latest with you. And you call me before they get off 
and I'm going and um and we'll go from there. But anyway, she came down there yesterday. I I think I started work about three. She came down about three thirty. She said, "Who closing with? Who is staying later? The latest." And she, one lady said, "Well, I'm. I think I." She said, "I leave at five thirty or six or something like that." And she said, "Well, I need two of these slices closed before you go. I need you to close two of these slices. I need you to sweep up the do 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 um wash some dishes. I need you to do all that before you go home because it's no way that Miss Tanya." She'll be staying in here, and I, I said, I got to get her a gift for that. <laughs> I got, oh, my God, I got to get her something that she want. I'm telling you, because she was on she was on top of her game. When I tell you she was on top of her game, if I, I got to find out her name, and I got to pronounce it right, because I got to give her a shot. So I, she just don't know how, what that mean to me. <laughs> Thank you is not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. I'm telling you it's not enough. When I, one thing about me, when somebody do something for me, I am very appreciative. Appreciative, appreciative. I'm a very thankful and grateful person. I'm a very humble person. I tell you, I have changed so much. I really have changed. I, I have to pat my own self on the back because, you know what? I look at even in relationships and stuff, I see how people, you know, um, like this lady up there, she come to work every day and she talking about, <laughs> she say her husband, not her husband, she said her boyfriend told her, Oh, he want to live somewhere else. And she's like, I've been calling him, and he ain't answering the phone. You know what? Y'all, that's why you can't work in peace, because you worrying the back end answering this phone. Leave that stuff alone. You you know, you can't worry about all that little stuff. A man, Hey, a man going to do what he want to do regardless, and a woman going to do what she want to do regardless. You just, can't, you just can't worry about all that little stuff. It's just too much. It's too much aggravating. <laughs> oh, it's too much. I am too old for all that. I can't. I love my life like it is. Like I told you, she was talking about, oh, I'm surprised you ain't got no boyfriend. I ain't got no boyfriend, and I ain't trying to get now. You know, hey, I can go out if I want to. I can't go out on dates and meet people and do this and do that, but I choose not to. All this is about choice, baby, choice. And I'm I'm just focused on myself because I got a lot of projects going on, and I don't need nobody hindering me for doing nothing, nothing at all because I right now, I'm a queen who care, cares for you, and I am unstoppable. And I got a lot going on. I got, like I say, and I know where I want to be in life by a certain time and all this kind of stuff. So I'm doing what I wants to do, you know. Not saying that, you know, if somebody come my life, you know, I'm just going to be like, oh, well, you know. No, I ain't going to be like that. I just want to live a peaceful life. And I don't want to live it carefree. I don't want to be worrying about what this man ain't doing. And is he um, talking to this woman that way? That I done passed that stage now. I really have. You know, I really, I, I really, really have. But, um, like I said, if you got something good, somebody good in your life, they treat you good, you treat them, you, hey, y'all vibing together, hey, y'all stay with each other, make your best to make it work. Because you, one thing, you know what you got, but you don't know what you get. <laughs> because I tell you, it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. When I, every time I turn around, it's just drama, 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 drama. And I ain't with the drama. But um, but I just want to share my experience as a lot of these supervisors, but she's a good supervisor, but a lot that I have met, oh my God, it's like, you know, and a lot of the, you know, the, a lot of the blacks here, they act like they more than others, they look at you, you you know, you got more white people come in the store and say, hi, how you doing, how you day going, blah, 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 but you barely, you barely have white, black people come in um, here and, and ask you all that. I mean, you speak to them, they act like they don't hear you. You, I mean, it's, it's just like they just think they're more than other people. You got a lot of black, bougie people here, and you really do. You got a lot of black, bougie people, and the, and the managers and the supervisor, they uh, just um, oppress the other black people. <laughs> they really do. They, you know, that my, like my nephew was telling me today, he was like, oh, you know what? I said, what's wrong with you? And he was like, oh, the supervisor was saying something about the phone and all this kind of stuff. And I said, well, you know you can't be on your phone. And I said, but, and he was like, she, and I said, well, you know what? I do see a lot of people walking around crows. I wonder how they get any work there the way they talk, <laughs> talk on the phone. But she probably don't see them because she be other places in the store. But I be seeing it all the time. They walk around and they be on the phone just talking, 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 talking. I mean, you know what? This every when, every time you you're know, making a video, but I'm not finna answer that call because I'm finna finish my video because I the universe downloaded this in my spirit to talk about, and I say that um, when I finish this uh, vid the previous video that I just made, I'm go was gonna oh what is this hand? But anyway, 
Like I said, you got a lot of bougie black people in Atlanta. I'm telling you. And you got a lot of homeless. Oh, my God, the homeless efforts. And I was looking at this guy that I follow, Go Black to Africa. And um, I think he lives in, I'm trying to think, where do he live? I don't know. I don't know what part of the state that his wife live in. But he was saying now he see homeless people. <laughs> he said, Good. but he lives in Africa. But he go every three months because, you know, the American passport, you can go in Africa, uh, well, probably in no matter where the country, you stay three months and got to come on back to your own country. But he said every time he get ready to come back to America, he said, dog, the, the, um, it get worse where he sees so many homeless people. And he said that um, the home people done finally made it well where he stayed. And he stayed in a really nice subdivision and all this kind of stuff. But you know what? With the high things going up and stuff, with the price, with the rent and all this kind of stuff, that's why it's like this. I mean... You know what? My insurance, I just paid 500 something dollars for my insurance with State Farm last month. Don't you? And then they just text me last week and talking about your payment due. And I just, of $800, how my payment went from 500 now to $800? And I don't understand that. And I called them. They telling me that I got some back pay. How I got back pay when y'all told me my insurance was 500 last week? When I first started with this insurance, it was like 300 now y'all done jumped to 500 and then he said not well if you want to catch up i think something going on some kind of scam going on but i just got more insurance with another company and i'm still it's still high it's still not where i want it to be but it's better than paying the uh 500 dollars 360 something dollars it's hot you already got a car payment of 400 and then you got insurance as well you know it's a lot of people just letting everything go it just a lot of people just can't maintain and keep up, and it's gonna be more. As the price, as the things, as things get high, high in America, you got to be making. After why the husband and wife gonna have to work two jobs together to make it. Two, two darn jobs. She, he gonna have to have two jobs, and she gonna have to have two jobs too. I mean, it's just too much. It is too. Who is it? You said somebody. I don't know where that come from. Tell me, send some money. They, they know they, they barking at the wrong tree talking about me sending somebody cash. I don't know where that number come from. <laughs> oh, but um, I'm probably. Oh, okay, okay. I think that's somebody calling for my son. But anyway. But anyway. But anyway, I am going to get ready in this video because I see I've been on here for 17 minutes. It probably be a part two to this. This is talking about. The up the uppity, I don't know what I'm going to name it, but I'll think of something. But like I say, B B Atlanta do have a, a lot of black uppity people here. I really do. And, and when it comes to management and all this kind of stuff, it do, ooh, you, they, they is the assistance to the slave master. They, they're the slave master assistants. That's what they is. I mean, they, the way they, they, they don't come in. Well, even if they come in to ask you something, they don't say, hi, how you doing? They just come and tell you. But like this guy, um, I had to do some training, and he just passed. Don't ask me, hi, Tanya, how you doing? Uh, oh, you did you do your training? Oh, you better do your training. You, you better do your training now um, because they just called me and all this kind of stuff. I'm looking at him like, I, I, how about I punched down and went straight home. I ain't stunned nothing what he was saying. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they just come. Yeah, I mean, it's just terrible. And then you go say, like, um, when you get ready to take out your trash and all this kind of stuff, they expect you to lift that trash up. The men just sitting there looking at you. I mean, what in the world? And what in the time? I mean, no, you know, no, say, you see you a lady and say, well, you know what? Let me help her out or whatever. Can't, I mean, they just expect you just to open the door, unlock the trash, and just expect you. I say, you know what? I'm just going to leave the trash in because it's too heavy to take out. And then they'll decide just to pick it up and take it out. But I'm like, ooh, one African guy that worked there, he from Senegal. And he, he said, you need me to take that trash out for you? And I said, yeah. He left both of them and took them out. I mean, the, a, a man for after the rest of the black American, our black American men, they done went to the dogs. The PD dogs, they just want women to take care of them. They just, I don't, they done lost it all. They just, I don't, and, and, hey, I don't even believe there's no good black American men um, left now. I really don't believe it, I tell you. But like I said, this is going to be another video because I don't want this to stop me. But I am getting ready to end this video. I continue to enjoy you, your um, Saturday afternoon. And um, 
Have a wonderful, phenomenal, peaceful evening. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace, love, and happiness.